I'm so happy to say I've finally seen A Quiet Place Part 2. This was one of my most anticipated films of last year, and last night I finally got to see it in theaters. I refused to watch this one at home because I missed out on seeing the first one in theaters. It was the year I was starting to get into movies, and I didn't really know about it, and I watched it at home, and I was, that was like the biggest regret ever. I really wish I could have saw that in theaters, but I knew I had to see the sequel in theaters once it was announced. And let me just say... This might be my favorite film of the year. Picking up right where the last one left off, the Abbott family now faces the terrors of the outside world. Forced to venture into the unknown, they realize the creatures that hunt by sound are not the only threats lurking beyond the sand path. So as I said while explaining the plot there, this film literally picks up exactly where the last one left off. Obviously the last one left off with ch ch and then it ended, and then here you can hear Emily Blunt reload the gun, and then it just starts, but it does kind of actually really start with day one, and I'm actually going to give a spoiler warning here. I wasn't planning on reviewing it with spoilers, but now that it's already out on digital, and for me, since I live in Canada, it's already on Amazon Prime Video for free. I don't know if it's like that in the States, so for those who can't see it in theaters because they aren't open, it is on there, so you do have a way to watch it, but I highly recommend watching it in the theaters. It is an amazing experience, but there's your spoiler warning. I'm not going to go too into it, but there are some specific plot points that I really want to talk about. So when the sequel was announced, I think the thing I wanted most was to see what happened on day one. For me, if they made an entire film out of that, I'd be interested. If it was just the first day or like the first week or anything, I'd be so interested in that. And this one opens up with day one, and the second, you know, it comes on, it says day one on the screen. I was like, yes! And I knew it from the trailers, like I had an idea, but it just tells it exactly. You see the monsters go in, the first one is like, it's Hercules Mulligan from Hamilton who plays the cop, and then one of the monster just goes and <laughs> flips the cop car it's crazy and then all like hell breaks loose it is also so well shot but i'll kind of get into that later because that's a massive thing i have to talk about but that opening sequence was so intense i have chills like i have goosebumps right now talking about it it was so good it was everything i crave and honestly it's one of my favorite movie openings ever not just in a horror movie but ever and then after that it does go to when she reloads the shotgun like that and then we see where this family is going to venture out because again spoiler warning for the first one too not just this one with the first one John Krasinski's character Lee the father does end up sacrificing himself he dies you know I will always love you that that will always get me every single time but he's not in the film except for in that first scene and you would think oh they're missing a big part of it like they're missing one of the big four I mean you can include the baby you're missing like one of the big four main characters here but because we have Killian Murphy in the film it just makes it even better because this guy really I mean he's one of the most underrated actors ever I loved him ever since I first saw him in Batman Begins I saw this film with my best friend my dad and my brother and my dad has watched Peaky Blinders so like I just knew that that's all he was picturing through it and he said it directly after in the accent and everything you know typical dad stuff and one day I will watch Peaky Blinders because it really interests me and I've seen many clips from it and he just looks amazing but he is phenomenal here he kind of takes center stage along with Millicent Simmons again sorry if I pronounced it wrong I'm terrible terrible with names if you can't tell in my reviews she is so good here she gives easily the best performance in the film and the best performance i've seen all year for any 2021 release like that is how good she is she deserves all the awards she can get if she is not nominated for anything which i wouldn't be surprised because this is a horror thriller movie I don't get it. <laughs> and Emily Blunt is kind of sidelined a little bit in this film, but it's not exactly a bad thing because she plays such a prominent role in the first one, obviously, as the mother. And it's not like you feel like she is sidelined, but when the characters do eventually split up, you know, Killing Murphy and Millicent Simmons, again, sorry if I pronounce it wrong, they go to find a boat to go to this, this island that's playing on the music. You know, if you've seen the film, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, I don't know why you're still watching the video. Whereas Emily Blunt has to go out to that pharmacy or like that store that we saw in the first film that it obviously opens in and she has to get the oxygen tanks because the way they stop the baby from crying is they lock it in a box and then just give it like an oxygen mask but another thing that I really love with the tension is that one of the things in this film is that they can actually speak there's much more dialogue here they just have to be very quiet in this one spot that Killian Murphy takes them in and like this enclosed thing but there's always a timer to see how long you can stay in here because obviously oxygen and one of the most intense scenes of the film is when Noah Jupe accidentally locks himself in this little chamber vault type thing with the baby and he's trying to share oxygen and the oxygen's totally run out. Simmons and Murphy are obviously away on this journey and Emily Blunt is away trying to get these oxygen tanks and it's so so intense and you have all the monsters and dealing with the monsters I mean, John Krasinski is a master. This is probably the best directed film I've seen all, all year. Actually, it is. 
it is. John Krasinski is a master. I think his direction actually improved in this film, and I love the first film. I just realized I haven't mentioned anything. I know I've been kind of rambling on here, but I'm just so passionate about John Krasinski making these films because I adore the first one. It's one of my favorite films of 2018. It's one of my favorite horror movies of last decade, and I feel like after a few more rewatches, and I've already seen it like three or four times, it could be one of my favorites of all time, and I will definitely be watching this movie again really soon. Like, if somebody asked me, hey, do you want to go see this in theaters again? I'd be like, hell yes, I do, but I'm getting it the day it comes out in 4K, and I want to watch like this one and that one just back to back, but John Krasinski just knows how to build tension. He knows how to get into your head and terrify you but not in the way you expect it. There was just one moment in this film that made me jump. Like, there, there's a few where something will pop out and be like, oh, nice. But there was one scene in particular where Millicent Simmons is reaching for a first aid kit inside, like, this broken down bus. She reaches, and you're thinking to yourself, like, oh, yeah, she's just gonna drop it in, and I'll make a noise. That'll be the scare. But the thing is, she picks it up, brings it back, you're like, oh, all good, and then something shoots out, so it's like the scare happens like two or three seconds right after you'd expect it, and that's what I really love about Krasinski's direction, it's so intense, and also, the sound design, oh my god, it is amazing, they explored it a little bit in the first one, but I noticed it at least more significantly here, at least it stuck with me more here, but when we cut to, again, Melissa Lynn Simmons, who's just phenomenal here, the sound just all goes down, and I watched a video where John Krasinski kind of like broke down the opening scene, I remember he did it for like the Lantern board game scene for the first one, but I think it's with like Vanity Fair or something, and or Variety, maybe? And that sounds right. And he talked about how when speaking to her mother in real life, because she is deaf in real life, how she can't really hear much, but she can hear just like a tiny bit. It's really quiet. She, she can hear laughter or if something explodes behind her, she can hear it, but just barely won't like startle her. So we kind of see that. So like in that opening scene where the monster comes and smashes the, the cop car, it goes flying. Everything's kind of going crazy. Krasinski's running towards the car and then it cuts to her and she's just like sitting there like this and you can just barely hear it. They use it so many times in this film and and it is so effective. And also the ending for me, I'm not gonna say too much about it because I could just ramble on about this film for a while. I know I already have this review is definitely longer than normal, but it really felt perfect to me. I know that the first one, when it when I first watched it, I was like, oh, that that's it? Like it, you know, it just and then that's it. And I was like, damn, that ends so fast. But this one does the same in a way, but I actually do have a defense of it because I feel like, so again, spoilers for like the third or fourth time, but Melissa Lynn Simmons and Killian Murphy do find a way to get to this radio signal station on this island. And then she finally does put her uh, hearing aid on it, which creates the frequency that, you know, they can kill the monsters with that. And also the editing is wonderful, but I'm going to stop rambling about it. Um, the editing is just perfect though. The cuts between everything just flow flawless, seamless, but when she does it, but we see how it works for Emily Blunt and Noah Jupe, and obviously they're able to kill their monster Well, the one that's chasing Melissa Lynn Simmons and Killian Murphy, they can all do it, and then the film just ends after that, but the thing is, is that most people would expect them to go back and like meet each other, and for me, I feel like that wasn't needed. All it would really be is a score playing while they sail back, and then they start crying and hug, and then the movie would be over, and you know, you don't really need that if you know it's coming, like that's just what you would expect it to be nowadays, but but I felt like the film didn't need it. I think it ended at the perfect moment. I don't really have any problems with the film. Like, there's nothing that I can point out to say, I didn't like this, I didn't like that. I can't quite give it the perfect grade just because I do have to really watch it again because maybe I'll find something on second viewing and I really don't want to complain about the film because it is wonderful. The theater experience was just incredible. I'm so glad to be back at the movies. I'm so happy to say I finally seen A Quiet Place Part 2 and it was definitely worth the wait. Krasinski masterfully directs this one with award-worthy performances from the whole cast, but especially Melissa Simmons. The sound design and cinematography are top-notch, and this was the perfect return to the movie theaters. For me, I'm going to give A Quiet Place Part 2 a 4.5 out of 5. I'm just so in love with this film. I don't know if they're making the third one. I heard rumors that Krasinski doesn't want to do it, but he also didn't want to do this film, and we saw how that turned out. I'm not exactly sure what they would do with the third film, but maybe they'll do something. I guess we'll see in two or three years. Depends on if the pandemic is still going on around there, but again, I'm just so glad to be back in the theaters, and I know this review is late, and normally I wouldn't review a movie if it's already been this long. It's been a month and a half. As I said, it's already on digital. It's coming to 4K in like a week or something, but I just had to talk about it. 
I really just had to talk about this film because I really adored it. I'm really passionate about Krasinski and the films he's making because I really love horror and I love to talk about it and there's something about this film and the first one that really inspires me so that's why I really just have to talk about it. It is probably my favorite film of the year so far but if you've seen it what did you think about it? Tell me down below and thank you all for watching. We'll see you guys next time over and out.